boy, when we're talking about the greatest villains of the decade, we gotta talk about Mickey. Um, <laughs> Disney is the greatest villain of the decade. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> David wanted me to do a voice for it. I had no idea. He just kind of made me do a voice, and I just I did a bit instead. We're talking about the best villains of the decade, so the 2010s Honestly, to 2019. The fact that Ethan did Mickey as the scary villain voice really makes me question what happened to Ethan and Mickey. Ethan, do you want to tell us a story? I never want to go back a... to the clubhouse. <laughs> Yo, that's a great Gorsh, like Ethan. That. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, give me your number five. My number five. Uh, so, so, yeah, villains. Villain. Yeah, did we this Just up? wonderful <laughs> portrayals by people. They're not necessarily... So, villains, we usually think of, like, horror movies or, like crime movies it it can be kind of all over the place just someone that just sent shivers down our spine specifically turned us into this geese last if de- you're talking de- about how bumpy our arms are what goose goose specifically bumps. though <laughs> the greatest villains of the last decade right so the 2010s to the 2019 because i know yeah. people will be going back and re-listening to our catalog into the late 2030s so wow my my first one. I we were recording by then, right? So let's hear Ethan's list. <laughs> Strap well, in. Disney will be the villain by then for sure. <laughs> um, Yo, we're like fucking Simpsons over here calling the future. Speaking about knowing the future, um, I'm not quite sure if the character in mine does know the future. It seems like he does, and it terrifies me immensely. Um, that is Martin. In the killing of a sacred deer. Whoa. Um, weird pull, but also great setup. Thanks. <laughs> um, this is, I've never been so intimidated watching a young boy eat spaghetti in my life. Part of what makes him so scary, <laughs> <laughs> yo. Every time I see somebody eat spaghetti, I am terrified. <laughs> he he is very direct, and you don't ever really know what he's capable of. Yeah. Really, what's going on and what he's done. You don't know at all. And I think that's where the immense terror comes from. Uh, every time that he just looked at a character or said, and anytime he was in a room, I got nervous. Like, just yeah. physically just curled up. And it was like, Martin, stop that, Martin. I don't like it, Martin. Stop it. Put this spaghetti down or I'll punch you in the nose. And then you go, it's such a unique punch him in the nose. role to, I feel like, identify as a villain because I don't feel like you truthfully grasp his level of villainous until that last little bit. Right, but that's, that's what makes him scary. No, I know. No, no, totally. Right, and I kind of explained um, that in my reasoning. <laughs> no, I know. I know. I, I like that. It's a good pick. My number five is a villain that you know is a villain from the first time you see him, and that is... Pennywise, specifically from the remake of it, uh, uh, portrayed by Bill Skarsgård, who does a phenomenal job. The voice is terrifying. And, and, and the fact that he's also torturing and tormenting all the kids of, a, of the city. What's the city? Dairy. Dairy. All the kids of Dairy. It's absolutely terrifying. And, and his opening scene... Where he's uh, Georgie. where he's just Georgie. Well, yeah, he's just he's a friendly Hiya, Georgie. little dancing clown. God, the the voice of Bill Skarsgård in the role of Pennywise is is phenomenal. And if it wasn't for it, Chapter Two, which I feel like kind of made uh, Pennywise way less scary. If it's just that first it, Chapter One, it's not called Chapter One. It's just called it. It it, it, it he's fucking terrifying. Yeah, he's so scary. Yeah. But he's not real. Um, and mine is a real <laughs> he's a real man. Uh, played in a complete tonal shift from anything we've ever seen him do before. Uh, as portrayed by Steve Carell, which is wild. Um, this is John E. DuPont in Foxcatcher. He just get he gets real close to you and he's just like you ungrateful ape. That was more Palpatine, I think. Um, Do it. Wrestle. <laughs> I feel like he's more. 
more like I don't know what his voice is, but he always wants to be called the Eagle. Yeah. Um. So basically, it's it's this guy that really just wants everyone to praise him and for him to be at the top of his game, but he only does that through pushing uh, competitors to the absolute brink. Um, you also have some fantastic performances uh, from Channing Tatum and uh, Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo is fantastic in that. But overall, the movie is really, really good. And I, I think it's just because it's Steve Carell, it, unlike anything we've ever seen. Um, it was pretty funny. He's, this is his audition for Despicable Me. <laughs> My number is, three you could is have, Gru. <laughs> you could have also just done the real John Luke Dupont uh, in in the Netflix documentary Team Foxcatcher. Uh, but I didn't. No, you did not. My number four is uh, another real life character portrayed by Michael Fassbender, and that is Edwin Epps in Twelve Years a Slave. Honestly, this m- probably should have been hi- higher. But I have not seen 12 Years a Slave in quite a while. <laughs> oh, I thought it was going to be a dead and, stop after. <laughs> it would be uh, higher, no. but I haven't seen it. <laughs> I just know he's terrible. Uh, there are so many scenes that I remember just thinking, this is the most horrible human being ever. And there's a there's a character on your list a little higher up, because I know your list, mm. who almost made me have the same reaction uh, to his to his actions throughout, but this one is just so much more visceral, and it's just like fuck, he's a terrible human being. Also portrayed by the fantastic Michael Fassbender, who almost had another spot on this list for his portrayal as Magneto, Magneto but I oh, felt I like that was gonna Magneto be a joke. was a little too no, but I felt like Magneto was a little too uh like I, some of the other movies. I just feel like he's he's more of a What's the word I'm looking for? Not all villain. Like, Days of Future Past. Mm, like, gotcha, like, gotcha, gotcha. An anti-hero. Yeah. Uh, so, you mentioned a guy that's bad on my list. Do you want to hear about a guy that's bad on my list? Yeah. It, 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 is, it is Lieutenant Hawkins from The Nightingale. This is exactly the person I was exactly. talking about. Exactly. Yep. Um, <laughs> this man sucks. <laughs> yeah. I hate this man. He is really bad. Quickly, I feel like I feel like this and uh, uh, Killing of a Sacred Deer are probably the two movies that most people have not seen. But uh, between both of our lists, right? Go watch them, specifically The Nightingale. Because on Hulu, but also The Killing of a Sacred Deer, which is on Amazon Prime. I don't know. So, is it also yes, also readily available. Okay, oh, so sorry. Jesus, uh, The Nightingale. Um, so this was this was a recent film. I this was just last year in 2019, just on the edge of the decade, and it has one of it is one of the most harrowing films I saw of the entire decade. And it starts off with this intense brutality um, from Lieutenant Hawkins that he at no point has any remorse for. Um, Despite the times where his actions finally start having consequences, he still has absolutely no remorse for the intense terror uh, that he causes. And it was a lot. Yes. What's your number three, two? My number three, Ethan? No. Two? Between, like, every... Number three. What's your number three? Between, like, everyone... (laughs) Between, like, everyone we've mentioned... What do you think, like, their their murder toll is? Like, 50? Maybe? Pennywise probably killed a lot of kids. Mm-hmm. But what about, uh, one half? What do you mean? Of everything. Oh, Thanos I thought you meant one half three. of a guy. And I was like, what movie <laughs> did you see where they killed one half? 50 and a half. I did wait, the wait, math, wait. actually. Is Don't it, answer the question. Is it Voldemort when he, <laughs> when he does a Yo, blast legit? on the Harry Potter? Voldemort almost made the list. Mm. Not gonna lie. Um, he almost had a nose. But he lost at the end. The nose. You know who won at the end? Thanos. Until, like, he loses eventually. But he did win for a moment! Right. Uh, Like Voldemort did. Actually, now that I think about it. (laughs) Voldemort never wins. He gets a wand. He kills Harry. That's his win. 
No, he doesn't. He kills Harry, but then like in like the other right, then he comes zone, back. He... It's almost like Thanos <laughs> kills a bunch of people, <laughs> but then they come back and he loses. No. It's the same movie, David. <laughs> okay, maybe my number three is Thanos and Voldemort. Thanavolt. <laughs> Thanavolt. Thanos. Uh, <laughs> Josh Brolin as Thanos is phenomenal. Some of the best dial uh, dialogue monologues. Uh, and honestly, funnily enough, a, they are dialogue still. It. I mean, act yes. Uh, and oddly enough, like you also can be like, shit. Maybe Thanos has got a point. Maybe like. That's, like, rational, but, like, not rational. Right, and my because point was, you know what? Actually, maybe Voldemort does have a point. Maybe you should kill this boy. <laughs> but only when he was a baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a hotter take than I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> What's your number three, two? What's your number two next? My number two? next. Damn. We are getting to the top. Yeah, we are. We're kind of breezing through this. You have built a very fine house, Jack. That's right. Wow. It's the 2018 film, The House That Jack Built, from Lars von Trier. Uh, Matt Dillon plays Jack, a serial killer, um, who the whole movie is just him recounting different... Uh, they, they, they call them incidents, um, but I call them uh, grotesque murders. <laughs> So it's kind of a little yep. different perspective. But the whole film, you are seeing these atrocities through the eyes of the man doing it. You, He is walking you through on this journey of these terrible things he did. And never, never quite justifying it, but more um, idolizing it is how it's kind of portrayed for him. Mm-hmm. Because he, you know, he compares like... Things like the Holocaust to great art, you know? Yeah. He thinks that what he is doing is for some sort of wonderful <laughs> release and expression. And it is horrifying. <laughs> um, there's a lot of really brutal stuff in it. But I think the, the thing that really struck me of making him the villain is the film gives you a few moments where you agree with him and that's terrifying yeah it, it's you know it's really good i loved this film i loved it a lot and it's it stuck with me way more than i thought it would i keep you know coming back to with this me one. From that movie the most is the little deer scene like the animated deer jumping not like the the scene that's like surrounded by that even though that's a very wasn't it a lamb yeah, it's the little yeah. Lambs. Sorry, I fucked that up. I can picture them in my head. I would also like, just love the um, the David Bowie song they do. Fame makes a man think the It really Fame is. It's such a, it's such a weird movie, but it's also really good. Um, May you know, ever next, David, okay. what's your next movie? My number <laughs> two. My next movie. My number two <laughs> villain. Not a movie. Um, because if it was a movie, it'd be my, my number one. Uh, is Terrence Fletcher from Whiplash. Mmm. Mmm. Are you <laughs> crushing? Uh, are you dragging? Remember when he was like kind of like a pseudo... <laughs> a, a <Nazi>? <laughs> like what? Uh, I think this is... Are you <laughs> Russian? <laughs> or are you dragon? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Almost the definition of a Smog. villain who, who you can... Like, like understand and justify his his horribleness to everyone because honestly, like it's 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 an interesting idea that he that he lives by his his motto. Plus, like also, let's be honest, the best fucking insults to ever come out of any mouth was from J.K. Simmons. Oh yeah, in this movie. Yeah, like they are just that drummer is a menace. <laughs> I want photos of um, drummer. <laughs> also, J.K. Simmons in this role looks fucking great in his little black tee. Like, he was lifting weights <laughs> on the side David, are set. you horny for Fletcher? No, that sounds so weird when you say it like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I agree with you, though. I think I think that one of the things that makes um, him a, a 
incredible villain is that the motives are understandable and that there is yeah. it's so easy to overlook and forgive and let these terrible patterns repeat themselves over and over because there is a strange sense of justification you know the the few times that he's right about the process therefore oh, validates all the other times that he's wrong and like ruins people's lives i mean to like to the furthest degree like because fletcher is i think on the list the only character who is really more of a mental terrorist mm-hmm. is that the word i want to go with mental sure terrorist Sure. Um, but he also drives kids. I mean, because they're still pretty much kids. They're in college. Oh, yeah, no. He gaslights to, them to, to com- jazz fame. <laughs> Such a weird way to put it. Put it on the yes, poster. <laughs> uh, to jazz fame, but also to suicide. Like, he, he, you know, he pushes people to their, their darkest depths. Ethan, do we have the same number one? Absolutely, we do. It is the diabolical. Let's say it. Let's genius. say it. At, we're gonna say it at the same time. Hold on. Actually, okay. wait a second. I just gotta pull something up real quick. What do you pull? I just gotta. I I gotta really double check real quick. Damn it, David! I have to redo my list. Why? Because the Ant Bully came out in two thousand six, not in this past decade. So now I don't know what to do. God, I fucking hate you. <laughs> 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 okay let's Ethan, okay actually though let's say <laughs> let's, let's say our say number right one now. villain at the same our time let's count it down from three 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 uh wait, two, wait, wait, last time i counted up to three one one three <laughs> two, two one amy dunn oh. and malekith from thor the dark world <laughs> damn it the ant bully strikes <laughs> again um <laughs> absolutely you're right it's it's amy dunn in gone girl who yes. is this, uh, you know, another gaslighter. <laughs> Just. Oh, yeah. The It's literally a puzzle of a psychological torment. She went to the greatest length to to frame her husband for murder. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's just fascinating to see how this whole fucking story was strung together by her and it's god like it's so good plus she like she's also just a really cool character at the same time because you see i would the say she's amazing she's going... amy oh my god <clears throat> yes that's the... yep that's yeah nice nailed um... it i'm the animal <laughs> but like just seeing the extent that she's going to 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 fully cement the story in reality is crazy uh, but then also, like, she's this really interesting girl, woman, girl, because it's called a gone girl, uh, who also gives a speech on the cool girl. So, girl? Sick. Um, you nailed it. David, I am you. I want you to kind of wrap us out and, like, thank everyone for listening, because we don't always thank people at the end of the mini oh. so, so I want you to thank them while I read um, the entire... Uh, plot synopsis of the Ant Bully. So if you no, just want to no, 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 get started, this is actually a real no. This is actually a real outro that we right. Have to do. Okay. So in Las Vegas, lonely liked, ten-year-old boy Lucas Nickel is left with his older sister Tiffany. If you like listening Tiffany to and his grandmother when his parents go to Port of Decade, then you can head on Neglected over to his family and page, which is going to be right bully below named Steve in, and his friends. Lucas takes out his Jesus frustration on an ant hill and it attacks it with a squirt gun, terrifying the colony. One ant. An eccentric so wizard named Zock, as eight, played by Nicolas Cage, Ethan tries to fight back. Fell into His girlfriend, a, ant, a nurse ant, ant named hill. Hova, and in that as played hill, by Julia Roberts, who was fascinated by humans, found their attempts way to communicate with Lucas. He drops his gun on the grass now and kicks the ant hill with one of the sneakers, through sending his colony male, flying into the grass. Uh, uh, Hova uh, tries uh, to communicate uh, to uh, him, but he is specifically the urethra. And Before being rescued by Zok, the leaders of the colony the, decide to the, use the a potion Zok has recently created to shrink Lucas that, that down to ant size. Impossible now, for the local exterminator, urinate. Stan Beals, so as played by Paul Giamatti, is you have to stick a small straw-sized needle at the base of the uh, 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 shaft, 
which will then also allow you to drain it. Unfortunately, at the location that you have to make this insertion, makes it so when you when you release your bodily fluid, specifically urine, or sometimes semen, depending on the acts that you are doing, it, it makes it pool up all around your lower belly and belly button. Do, do we have, is there no more ant bully? So if you like listening to our <laughs> top five villains of the decade, then head on over to our Patreon page, where we're going to be releasing several other lists covering off on our favorite other topics of the past decade, specifically lists such as our top five sci-fi films, our top five... What's another top five we're going to be doing? Oh, sorry. I had my Action. mic muted for a little bit. So then the what? queen pronounces Lucas an ant no! in honor of his you heroic actions and Zot bastard. gives him the antidote. He returns back to normal size and finally stands up to Steve, who runs away from him and is now former friends as he insulted them, making them befriend Lucas and gang up on Steve. Lucas then showers the colony with jelly beans as a parting gift. Is this the Wikipedia? Now, David, I'm going to give you this? some jelly beans as a parting gift. Those are all the jelly beans. <laughs> That's the end of the episode. Uh, Why? No, no, I want to do the Patreon. No, bit. I did the jelly bean bit. No, no, save the jelly beans. Hold on to the jelly beans. Pick the jelly beans back up these. off the ground. Oh you can go over to our Patreon page and subscribe, where we will be releasing several other best of the decade lists, specifically lists such as best sci-fi film of the decade, best action film of the decade, and our monster episode, best movies of the day yeah and um i actually i didn't want to do this but david said that we had to do it on the patreon he will anyone that uh donates to patreon he will go to your house and feed you jelly beans um for i think you said five hours straight um or until he runs out of jelly beans but he did buy a lot um and it's uh, all the patreon money does go to david's jelly beans just go to david's jelly beans go to david jelly sign up now <laughs> We'll see you there. Um...